The utility of 60 mixed with the consistency of 40. Welcome to 50 card pendulums. You simply take the best of what 60 has to offer. The utility, the non-drawing bricks of 60, you combine it with the consistency of 40, and turf math, 60 plus 40 equals 50. Now I'm gonna show you guys the most updated list that I have, and I've been testing non-stop, so of course the list is gonna be updated constantly. And hey, you know what? Hey, hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button, because eventually, hey, let's hit 500 more subscribers. 500 more subscribers, 500 baby, 500 more subscribers, and we're gonna be releasing a 40 card deck profile as well. A 40 by 40 card pendulum list, which I played on stream and obliterated everyone with, that I'm saving for a future video. So hit the subscribe button, and 500 more subscribers, we're releasing the 40 card deck profile. Without further ado, let's go. All right guys, and on to the deck profile. So, for starters, we run three servant, three abductor, okay? Three mastery. The whole deck is revolved around these nine cards, okay? These nine. If you draw one of these nine, again, you're not even playing a 50 card deck. You are more so playing a 40 card deck, as I'll show you guys later, you play 10 draw cards. But you play in total 30 spell cards in this deck, three zero. So 30 out of 50 cards in your deck are spell cards. Normally, the big mistake that you, the pendulum players do is they, if they play Servant, they'll play something like 10 spell cards and play these six. They won't even play Abductor, even though it's a plus one every single hand, and they play these six with 10 spells. How do you expect Servant to ever resolve if you're only playing 10 spells in your deck? You can't do that. You have to make a decision. You either go all out on this engine or you go none of it in the engine. You take out the entire Endymion engine and Abductor completely, take out all the draw cards and stuff like that, uh, but you that's so stupid. These are the best pendulum cards in the game right now These are by far every one of them are you get anything you want out Like they are the best pendulum cards in the deck and in the game They are infinity times better than guard dragons dark, dark worm pendulum magicians everything This is the new core of all how all pendulum decks should be built around So you must play a bunch of spells in your deck or if you decide not to play them if you're an idiot, you just take them all out. You take them all out. You don't play three servant, three mastery, and six spell cards. Like, you just don't do that. You just don't do that. You gotta make a decision what you uh, what you want. Now, the beauty of it is all six, nine of these also turn into turbo cards to make your Electro through hand traps very easily. And with the new ruling, if it gets Ash, Ogre, or whatever, you can do it again. That's when you need to play nine. You, they don't conflict. If you see both of them, you just pick the, which one you want to use at the beginning. And normally you have enough spells to resolve both. A lot of times you can activate both in scale and I have six spell cards to activate and you're still going to resolve everything and get counters on them if that makes sense for you guys. So they're absolutely mandatory, okay? Uh, it's, it's 40 or 50, whatever it may be. In my 40 card list, which, hey, if you got, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you guys want to see my 40 card list, let me know in the comments below and hit that subscribe button, man, because at 18,500 subscribers, we'll be releasing our 40 card deck profile. Now, we're going to go on with the list. Triple Chrono, Triple Curtain Razor. You still need to play these. Dark, dark, I took Ravine out of the deck. Ravine is no longer in the deck, which means you only have four Foolish Burials left, which means you're not gonna resolve Dark Room all the time. You need to see one of these all the time. On top of that, as I said, you resolve these all the time. These are spell cards as well, because when you activate your main part of the deck, which are these and Mastery, these simply go on the other scale. So for example, if you got Abductor in one scale and you draw a Curtain Razor, you put Curtain Razor in another scale, it leaves the scale and you get a free counter on the Abductor. Then you put another count of Pendulum there, just like that, without even activating a spell card, you have two counters on Abductor. Then activate one spell card, it resolves. Ghost Ogre, no problem. You activate the other one because you play nine of them. That's why you must play nine, no matter what. And infinity spell cards to make sure these resolve all the time. And these are all turbo cards. In 50, all these are necessary. 40 is just not as good, man. 40 just sucks. 50 is, per I think 50 is perfect. At the moment, this is the list I built for playing against my friends or whatever it may be. This is, at the moment, is my best list for sure. Next, Triple Dark Room. I tested two multiple times, multiple times. Even with Penko Dark Room, as beautiful as it is, you don't ever want to normal summon Dark Room. Obviously, it's the best normal summon, but you prefer not to have a hand of two Dark Room and two Magicians. Something like that's just garbage. That's what breaks your hand. And sometimes Triple Dark Room will break your hand playing three in your deck but it's fine you just can't afford to banish it with desires uh so you just need to play three anyways for that but putting it to two is 100 percent okay next i'm going to give you a, something very important for you guys to know don't play three harmonizing it's absolutely stupid 
You play eight harmonizings because the six pendulum calls and harm. If you ever need it, Electrum will send it. Harmonizing breaks your hand. If you draw two harmonizing, you can't even play. Like, you gotta be smart about it. Harmonizing is a great card. We don't need to play 10 copies of it. You already have six pendulum calls in 50, four, in 40, whatever it may be. Next, the magician count. I want you guys to understand something. 99% uh, of magicians are this. Yeah. Supreme King Gate Zero Magician. That's what 90% of magicians do. So don't fill your magician deck with three Black Fangs and three Poisons. In fact, don't even play Black Fang. In fact, barely play, only play one Poison. This is the magician count. The magician suck in your hand. You don't ever want to see these ever, ever. You do not want to see these in your hand, but you must play two low scales right here. Two low scales. You must play two high scales. And I chose this over Oak Dragon simply because its effect is so important with, drag with guard dragons. If your guard dragon combo gets stopped, if your LP gets interrupted, if anything gets interrupted, Caller can make anything else a dragon. Make Agar Pain and you still continue with your combo as normal. Next, if you don't have access to Dark Room because you only have four Foolish Burials and uh, through Dark Rooms you open. What if your Electrum gets Valored or Impermanence and you cannot resolve your Dark Room? This ensures that no matter what, if you have a dragon or not, you're going to resolve the Guard Dragon combo. The whole deck's revolved around the Guard Dragon combo and when the whole deck is revolved around it, this is absolutely mandatory if your whole deck is revolved around the Guard Dragon combo. So there's no reason whatsoever not to play it. As to what I said before, the Black Fang and the Pearl Poison. You will never, what deck do you, would you ever use Black Fang's effect on? Thunder Dragons, yeah, whole Parbinger, like if they ever need to. What the hell are you ever gonna use Black Fang for? It's such a waste of a card. It's literally just a gate zero. You're never gonna activate the effect to special summon a monster from your graveyard. If you do that, it's gonna be turn three, which there's gonna be no turn three because you're gonna win. Don't play those garbage cards, same with Poison. What are you gonna poison on? Whole Parbinger? They're gonna stop it. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't do shit for you. It literally doesn't do anything. It just bricks for you. The thing about all the other matches you're gonna play against Sky Striker, uh, Salamangrate, Orcus, Poison, and Black Fang do literally nothing against them. For the uh, different metas, Black Fang will be good. Maybe when Apollo comes out, Apollo's main Black Fang will be good then. But at the moment, nothing else other than these. I hope that was clear for you guys with uh, not as big a brain as me. Next. Gate zero, time gazer. Uh, you need to play, also, I would not play purple poison if not a level, it was not a level four. You only need one level four in your deck for harmonizing the special out to make Utopia double. It is your win con going second. Going first is irrelevant. You're gonna win anyways going first. You need to fill your car, your deck and extra deck with cards that obliterate your opponent going second. Going first is already an auto win. That's also why time gazer is the next card you bring out because time gazer harmonizing, you go Yazi, which is gigantic. You have no idea how important harmonizing is to be a one card Yazi. Anyone that doesn't play Mary Mary in this deck is absolutely idiotic. Harmonizing just a one card Yazi, which is insane. A one card Yazi. And that's after they're going to see Destrude in your grave. They're going to do whatever. They, when, they, when you use Destrude's effect to come out uh, with a gazer or whatever, sorry, with any monster you have on board, you're going to try and activate Destrude effect in grave to bring it out. They're going to do everything in their power to stop the Destrude because they know Yazi, you don't be able to target anything. Which means they're going to try and stop the Destrude. After the neck to stop the Destrude, they won't even see Harmonizing Time Gazer coming. Use harmonizing effect. They won't even see this coming. They need to go Yazi again. It is so incredibly important. In fact, I would play Time Gazer even if Chronograph wasn't a card. Well, I'd play Time Breaker in that case. But that's the count so far. All right, next. One Endymion, one Jackal. You play Desires, but who gives a shit? You do play a good amount of one, uh, uh, one like one copy of cards. And that's totally okay. If any of these get banished, who gives a shit? Who cares? It doesn't affect your play at all. And there's two more one ups, which are the, the pseudo and Mirror. If any of these get banished, who gives a shit? What the hell? Who gives a shit? You just uh, change your play accordingly. It doesn't matter. One of uh, playing one of the desires deck doesn't matter. As long as it's not like one quick fix, one super agent, I don't know, whatever it may be, one of cards you need for a combo, fine. If you don't necessarily need the pseudo or Mirror if it gets banished, it's fine. You just do a different route. But Mirror is remarkable to have. Going second, banishing Mirror hurts a lot, but he still is worthy of the desires because against multiple negates, that extra card is so incredibly important. That one extra card you add from Desires, regardless of what you banish, lets you play around with one extra interruption easily. And one Jocko, one Endymion is all you need. You only play Jocko for the Servant, because this is a Servant Turbo deck. And Demion as well. And you want something else for Mastery, a high skill for Mastery. There's no Cerberus in this deck. Mythical will be Cerberus. Because if it gets Ash, and if their opponent has one more hand drop on top of the Ash, you don't need it. And the deck has so many Turbo cards with the uh, uh, Doctors and the Servants. There's so many of them. And the Curtain Raisers. You don't need to play more than that. The pseudo memory is necessary, man. For foolish or shine to send this, not just a dark room in case you draw multiples, is absolutely beautiful. Next, triple pen call, triple duelist alliance. In 40 cards, I prefer two and two, okay? But in 50, you need to ensure you see pen call all the time, no matter what. 
Six is perfect. If you take out a Duelist Alliance, I, it just seems like I'll be so sad if I don't see it. You need to see Pen Call every turn. It's how you play through so many interruptions. It's how you shit on Rage. It's how you shit on Salaman Great. Shit on everything. Dragon Pit is so important as well. And again, Mystic Mind decks, you want your seven outs to Dragon Pit main deck. And after siding, you have a whole shit ton. One Foolish Triple Shrine. Okay? Beautiful. I don't want any. If you're playing 40, if you're playing 40, which I'll show you my 40 card list another time, another video, you still gotta play four of these. Because worst case scenario, you send a Distrudo. And I prefer playing four of these in 40. Because in 40, you're gonna draw way too many times. You're gonna draw three of them. Next, draw cards. This is the most important, well, actually before that, Triple Mastery, as I said before. The most important part of the whole deck. Uh, why people don't play this entire lineup is beyond me. 10 draw cards, okay? 10 of them. Do you know what Servant and Abductor do? If you don't know, let me tell you right now. It says, resolve, win the duel. That's what it says. You're playing so many spells, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely insane how many spells you're playing. These all leave the scale. They're all spells. Look, they're all spells. How many of these leave? I give two counters as well. Look how many spells you're playing. Master gets two counters. Those lines get two counters. Desires essentially get two counters. Like, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. All of these draw cards essentially also get two counters because they're going to draw you into another spell. You play 30 spells on a 50 card deck. It's absolutely insane how good this is. And it lets you, the draw power is insane. You just never have a bad hand. I know it's, oh, why are you picking up certain 50 card deck? It's for these. Like, you need to play these. The draw power is insane. You're never, I know, like, Into the Void will replace itself or something else. I'm sorry, replace itself or something else. But you get the free counter and then you get something else. It's like, absolutely insane. Like, you get a plus for, and then it replaces itself, but you get a plus free counter. And that one counter could change a duel. That one counter could change a duel. If you, if you could resolve a Servant or Abductor, but you're missing one counter, you guys know, you're gonna change the entire outcome of the duel. Especially because you have cards like, Mirror Mirror, the auto win, Jackal, Pantrap, and then ultimately the best card of all, Double or Nothing. There is still room for all these cards in a 50 card deck. See, the issue with 60 was there's too big, you won't draw your side cards, all that. But look at this. The side deck is built in a way where it's auto win. You're playing 10 draw cards. You're essentially playing a 40 card deck. You're playing a 50 card deck, but 10 draw cards. Now, the beauty of this is this. Now, after siding, you don't, hand trap don't do shit this format. Like, they'll be okay, but you're gonna need multiple, draw them in multiples and they'll brick you. Right? Why side nine hand traps or some shit like that and hope you draw two of them or lose? Instead, why don't you be able to play with a six card? Why don't you, you're allowed to draw into your auto win side cards. Now, the thing with how I built the side deck, it is so damn broken that it doesn't matter if you lose game one or not, you're winning game two and game three. It doesn't matter. Like, I will let my opponent go first after siding all the time. After siding, I let my opponent go first all the time. Simply because you draw one of these cards I'm about to show you in the matchup and you auto win. So against Thunders and Pendulum, those are the two best decks right now, you side three Sphere Mode, three... This is Lava Golem, I prefer Super Poly. So three Sphere Mode, three Super Poly, okay? This is Super Poly right here. Or it could be Lava Golem, whatever you prefer. I just didn't have Super Polys on me, but this is Super Poly is definitely better. So imagine this as Super Poly. Now after siding, you're facing against Thunder Dragon or Pendulum. You got three Sphere, three Lava Golem, or three Super Poly, whatever six of the nine you prefer. Sphere is way better than Lava Golem, and I think and Super Poly is better as well. Because Super Poly clears three interruptions, because you're playing Draco Stalia, okay? The Perta Plant. That one clears three interruptions, and sometimes four. So, you draw one of these six, these three being Super Poly, in a 50 card deck, you also are allowed to draw one of these ten now. Because if you draw, in this, and you have your six card available, as opposed to using hand traps, where you're not allowed to draw into the auto wins, and you're not allowed to draw into your user six card if you had hand traps. Now this just ensures no matter what you win, especially with Apollo now, Apollooza, hand traps are going to be absolutely garbage because they are very, very simply just going to, even with a bunch of random monsters, make up Apollooza and he's got to deal three negates or something like that. This ensures screw Apollooza and you destroy them. And I like Super Poly more because Super Poly, Draco Stalia can attack into the Apollo after. So it's like you clear the whole board and then do that. So don't forget these. Now the matchup is not even done yet. So you still got three Super Polys, right? These are Super Polys, don't forget. Three Super Polys and three Denkos. The other card in your, you play two Super Targets for Super Poly. One is the uh, Drac Predapont and Dracostalia, uh, the Destroy Thunders and Pendulums, and the other one is Salamangrate, the Salamangrate Fusion. Now, three Super Poly and three, this is two Poly again, three Denkos, six cards that absolutely obliterate Salamangrate. Draw one of them, their whole board is gone, and they can't use any of their traps, and you just OTK them with your, with your trap, with your fusion that you stole from them. And now, you look at it, you're drawing into these two. Draw, like you have so many ways to draw into it, it's insane. You just cannot lose going second after siding. It's impossible. Now, when you face back row decks, you got three Denko, two Reboot. 
Now you got five cards that just auto win versus garbage decks like Draco. Now these are pots that don't have it. Two spell cancelers. Now you have seven. Now you have seven Mystic Mind decks. You have seven ways to obliterate them. Just draw one of them. Strikers. You have five auto wins. Just draw any of the five. These are, these are uh, spell cancelers. Draw any of them, you auto win going second. And you, you don't just need to, it's not just to drawing one of the five or six. You're drawing into these with your draw power. You know what I mean? After siding now, it just, these cards make siding incredible and they make going first incredible. And because of how many cards you're playing, how many bombs are you playing in main deck, you could play with three cards and you'll win. Like this and this is just a win, a win by itself. And you're left with six cards anyways. You're gonna be left, and you're not oversiding. You're only siding like six cards. So you're not gonna overdraw too many sphere modes or whatever in 50 cards. You're playing six super six options to auto win. So with pen calls and super points discarding too, you're never gonna draw an excess amount. Then after you clear the whole board or clear all, most of the interruptions, you're basically gonna have one interruption to deal with with your four cards. It's like an auto win. And these are the two super play targets on the side deck, which I don't have my bad for that. Pride upon Dracostalia and then the Salamangre Fusion. I need O2K them. Now have the extra deck, one Electrum. This should be B-Cop, not Vlacus, but I didn't have it. But B-Cop is a bit, sometimes it's effects are relevant. Don't use Lambda because you can't use tokens for it. LP, Triple Burst, Agar Pain, Vortex. Got normal Guard Dragon combo here. I like B-Cop because B-Cop allows you to freely use Electrum to effect if you have a Chronograph in hand. And Abductor allows you to do that because a lot of times you're gonna add Chronograph with Abductor. Then sure, you're allowed to use Electrum to effect freely. Then it's special summon Chrono to make a uh, Land for Lapkus and then do the Guard Dragon combo as normal. Especially with Dragon Collar, you're gonna need a Link 2 going down with Dread Lamp Locus or Meat Cop, whatever it may be. Your Dragon Collar and Scale target the anything here. You could even if you have to summon a Dark Room in your extra deck and have no dragons, Dragon Collar can still target the card here. Uh, the Land called Locus here or Meat Cop, whatever, and still do Guard Dragon combo. And then uh, one Seal, sorry, I'm proxying. I know it's $2, I just haven't had time to get it yet. And one Dragster. That is the extra deck uh, that's going first. Now, if you notice that, that's eight cards. There's seven cards left. Remember I said going second is the most important issue? Yazi, Link, Karibo. You absolutely obliterate them. Yazi, bring up Mare Mare. Mare Mare, you have three tokens. Link, Karibo, one of them. Phoenix, one. Boral Sword, easily. Or use your Mare Mare for the best card in the deck, which is Utopia Double. Now, Mare, Yazi, you harmonizing equals Yazi Pop. You get the Mare Mare. Then you have so many random level fours going around, it's insane. And again, this is Utopia. Oops. This is Utopia. Not Utopia is excellent, I just don't have it. Like, I know Utopia and Seal are like $2 cards and $1 cards. I just don't have time to get it yet. Next, you have three more cards left and two nightmares. Your choice of Phoenix, Cerberus, or Unicorn. I think Phoenix and Unicorn is better, but Cerberus is also an option because I think Cerberus is underrated. Any two of the three, whatever you personally prefer, Phoenix is a must. That's Cerberus or Unicorn, whatever you like. I think Unicorn is better though, so imagine that's a Unicorn. Lastly, a Boral Sword. I know this is Boral Load, but again, I didn't have it at the time. I let one of my friends borrow it. So Boral Load, Boral Sword, pick whichever you want. One of the Boral cards. Also, Boral Sword is not that necessary because you OTK link into Oblivion with Utopia Double, and it's your whole game plan. Guys, that is a deck. It's absolutely insane. If you guys like the video, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you guys next video. Peace.